Greetings, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. As we begin worship, I want to do what I always do and encourage you to consider sharing this gift of worship with others. So if you're on Facebook, just go down and click share, and, uh, and you can, I think you click share again, and uh, this, the service will now be on your, uh, your feed. If you're on one of our other platforms, you're going to just go up and copy the link out of the browser and share that with, with someone, however, however you you want to do that, but uh, you could be a part of giving this gift of worship to someone today, so I just I encourage you to do that. So uh, today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's a day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the first Christians. And it's my prayer that during this time of worship that you will experience the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, much like those first disciples did so long ago. And I want to invite you now to join in our Pentecost greeting, and you'll find the words on your screen. And in the last days it shall come to pass, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old, old men shall dream dreams, and your young shall see visions." When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And now I invite you to join in our opening hymn. And now I invite you to join me in a brief moment of prayer. Oh God, you sent the Holy Spirit to enkindle the zeal of Christ's followers, waiting in Jerusalem for his promised gift. Pour that same inspiration on your people here assembled 
and on the church of Christ throughout the world. Revive the power of the gospel in our hearts that it may be to us a sacred trust for the blessing of all creation. Enable your church to spread the good news of salvation so that all nations may hear it in their own tongues and welcome it into their own lives. Protect, encourage, and bless all ministers of the cross and prosper their words and works so that Jesus, being lifted up, may draw all people unto him and the kingdoms of the world may become the kingdom of our Lord and of Jesus Christ. And now, God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And after this next hymn, we invite the children to gather around wherever you are for the children's sermon. Hey everyone, so glad you're joining us. I want you to think of really cool moments when people come together. What happens? Maybe you're on a team, and so whatever sports you play, when everyone comes together and you all work together and perform really, really well, you might win. And think about the opposite. What happens when you're by yourself? I think it would be really hard to pitch and catch at the same time. Or if you're on a dance team to do a duet competition by yourself. I mean, it is so much better when we're together. It's so much better when we work together as a team. Really awesome things begin to happen. So recently, a few days ago, I had one of those moments. I saw how awesome it is when people come together and work together because there was a storm. I don't know if you remember it. But what happened was the wind came in and it blew a tree over right onto my house. Uh, And everything's okay, but it was a really, really big tree. And so if I would have tried to to take that tree away by myself, 
it would take me months. I mean, this, this is a really big tree. So instead, all of my neighbors and friends from all over Baton Rouge came together. People brought chainsaws, people brought ropes, they brought all of these different things that we needed, and we got it picked up. And it was really awesome. Um, so in our Bible story today, we see something like this. We see people come together and really incredible things happen. And you might know this story just by looking at this. Does this remind you of anything? See, in Pentecost, these people from all over came together to celebrate this festival. And Jesus' disciples were there, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit shows up. That's kind of what we've got the flame for. Now, I'm sure these, the Holy Spirit would have done really awesome things with just one person there, two people there. But all the people from all over accomplished so much more and pointed to God in such a big way that shows us that working together and being together is always better than being alone. And so maybe you have something like this. Maybe you have some construction paper or something around. Maybe you can gather a few people around and, and do a little thing where you put it above your head and you're the only one, right? This light would be pretty bright, but not as bright as it could be. And when everyone puts their, their flame above their head, think of how bright it could be. So as you're listening to the sermon today, I want you to think how much better we are together than we are alone. We'll see you guys next time. So Pentecost is a day when we recognize that God's Spirit dwells in all of us as a church. And so I can think of no better time for us to share the peace of Christ with one another. And so I want to invite you at this time to share the peace of Christ with anyone who might be worshiping with you and to extend those greetings to others via text message, on social media, in the comments, however you feel led to do that. But may the peace of Christ be with you. So I just want to uh, bring really one announcement to your attention today, and as I do, I do want to point out that uh, there are several links on whatever platform you're worshiping on, uh, and I hope you'll take a moment and, and interact with those links. And so one of them is a connection card, and that's just a way that you can let us know that you're worshiping uh, today. Uh, so if you click on that, you can share a name with us or an email address. Uh, and if you're worshiping with us for the first time, or maybe you've come across this worship service somehow, or someone shared it with you, I, I want to welcome you and ask that you in particular take a moment to fill out that connection card. Uh, we just want to be able to welcome you and, and tell you that we're glad you're here in worship. You'll also see uh, prayer request options that, uh, where you can share a joy or a concern. And I do want to remind you that as we worship right now, there are people worshiping with you all over the place. And so if you want to share a prayer request in the comments, uh, those who are worshiping with you could join you in prayer. And then finally, I want to encourage you to, to think about giving a financial gift to ch this church in support of our ministries. Uh, you can do that uh, via a, a link or the text option there. Uh, you can go to our church's website anytime, and uh, you can also mail a gift to the church, and you'll see the address on your screen. So uh, I mentioned in my sermon last week that a group from our church went over to Lake Charles, and we were doing some cleanup work from uh, from. Uh, Hurricane Laura, which took place in August of 2020, and the need there was, is, still, is still great. Um, but just this, this week, uh, we had more rain and more floods come through southwest Louisiana and even Baton Rouge, and, uh, and we have many flooded homes, and there's a great deal of cleanup work to be done yet again. And so uh, the way that we're asking you to support that ministry right now is by making a, a special offering. Uh, and you can do that by texting the word FLOOD, so F-L-O-O-D, to 22525. And every gift we receive that way uh, will go to uh, support the relief from these most recent floods in both uh, southwest Louisiana and in Baton Rouge. And uh, we'll be partnering with churches in that area with our annual conference, and we'll be doing some work of our own here in Baton Rouge. So I encourage you to give generously. Uh, and, and now I want to invite you to join me in prayer as we ask God's blessing over this time of offering. Let us pray. Living God, you sent your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak your word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty. And we are grateful that you are continually at work in our lives and in the world uh, fulfilling your promises. Uh, 
And Lord, we do say a special prayer for all of those in southwest Louisiana and those here in Baton Rouge uh, who uh, experienced flooding once again. Lord, be with them. Help them to know your comforting presence and help us uh, to love our neighbors as you have called us to do and to, and to be a part of, of bringing wholeness back to their lives. Lord, we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I want to invite you to join me in the prayer for illumination, and we're using a prayer uh, that's specifically for Pentecost Sunday, and you'll find the words on your screen. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith, and come now to illuminate your holy word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Today's reading comes from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at, this, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great glorious day of the Lord. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I want to start with a question today, uh, and it's this. How many of you would like to experience the power and presence of God in your lives in a tangible way? Uh, Or how many of you want and need the power of God to be at work in your life? Uh, And so I think uh, probably I hope everybody would answer yes to those questions in in some way. Uh, And if you answered yes, I want you to uh, pay particular attention to this sermon because I think it will speak to you and hopefully show you a way that you can encounter that power and that presence. So before we get too far into exploring this scripture, I want to make sure we understand a couple of things. Uh, First, the first thing is this. The Christian faith teaches that there is one God but that that one God manifests in three persons. We call this the Trinity. So we believe in one God. We're monotheists, right? We have one God, but this God manifests in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, And I don't have a whole lot of time to go into the Trinity right now, and even if I did, I'm not sure I could explain it. Uh, But what I need you to understand is that when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about God, the Holy Spirit, is God. And the second thing I want to I want to make sure we understand is that because the Holy Spirit is God, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we should use personal pronouns, okay? Uh, we would never call God it, right? Uh, and so when we talk about the Holy Spirit, who is God, we also shouldn't call the Holy Spirit it. And so uh, you can pick a pronoun. Use he, Uh, To use she would be completely acceptable, but please just don't use it. And I'm going to try really hard in talking about the Holy Spirit during this sermon not to use that impersonal pronoun. Uh, And just real quick, that shift, when I started making that shift and talking about and talking to the Holy Spirit as a person, um, something shifted in my understanding and experience of the Holy Spirit. So I I encourage you in that, and I challenge you in that. Okay, so at the end of Luke... Jesus tells his disciples to stay in Jerusalem and to wait for something that God has promised. This is what he says. He says, stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And so when we arrive in Acts, uh, we see the disciples doing just what Jesus had told them to do. They're waiting in Jerusalem. And it's on the day of Pentecost, which is a Jewish festival, that several miraculous things take place. First of all, there's the sound of a violent, rushing wind, the Bible tells us. Then tongues descend upon the disciples. Uh, They are filled with the Holy Spirit, and what I call a miracle of translation takes place. And basically what happens here is the disciples are talking, and there are people who are from all over the region gathered there in Jerusalem for this festival, and when they hear the disciples talk, they hear them speaking in their own native language. So if my uh, my, my native language was Spanish, for example, When I heard the disciples speaking, I would hear it in Spanish. If my native language was German and I heard the disciples speaking, I would hear it in German. And this is this miracle of of translation. So 
Pentecost is a really special day in the life of the church. In some ways, we call it the birthday of the church. And for a long time, when I read this story about the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, I thought that uh, this was the first time the Holy Spirit had ever come, that God had somehow kept the Holy Spirit kind of bottled up for this special occasion, and that Pentecost was the Holy Spirit's big debut. But the more time I've spent with Scripture, especially the Hebrew Scriptures, the more I've realized that that is not at all the case. The Holy Spirit has always been around, living in and guiding and empowering God's people. Um, If you want to, uh, if you've got a Bible at home, take a moment, open up your Bible and open to the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Uh, In the first chapter, the very first verse, we encounter the Holy Spirit. It says this, in the beginning, Uh, When God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void, and God's Spirit hovered over the deep. And so right there, very first uh, chapter, very first verse, we encounter God's Spirit. Uh, When we read about Moses leading God's people out of uh, Egypt, we read that he was filled with God's Spirit. One of my favorite stories as a kid was the story of Samson. You know, he was this sort of strong man in the book of Judges. Uh, But there's a time where Samson kills a lion with his bare hands. And do you know where his strength came from? Uh, the, The book of Judges tells us his strength came because the Spirit of the Lord had come upon him. Uh, When we hear a word from the Lord from prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, the scriptures tell us it's because they were filled with God's spirit. That's how they spoke on behalf of God. And I could go on and on giving you example after example of the way that the Holy Spirit is present in the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, So the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was not a first It wasn't the first time the Holy Spirit made an appearance. But still, something very special does happen at Pentecost. So 800 years before the time of Jesus, a prophet by the name of Joel wrote these words. And they're actually the words that Peter shares when he makes his speech here. But listen to these words from Joel. This is the second chapter of the 28th verse. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. So Joel foresaw a time when God's Spirit would not be poured out just on a special few people, people like Moses and Samson, but that God's Spirit would be available to everyone. And that's what happens at Pentecost. So I want to read just a couple of verses for you again from our reading today, but this is what I want you to pay attention to. Pay attention to the pronouns, okay? Pay attention to the pronouns. So this, this is what it says. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So do you notice, you notice something about those pronouns? They're all plural pronouns. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit came upon Peter or the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, although the Spirit certainly did. It says the Spirit came upon them, they. Uh, the Holy Spirit does not just come upon individuals in this biblical story. Uh, the Spirit comes upon them collectively. So I've been thinking a lot recently about how things are amplified when they're done in a group. I know that for uh, many people, one of their favorite things to do here in Baton Rouge is to go to Tiger Stadium and watch LSU play, or maybe, maybe you go to Southern. But there's, something, there's nothing quite like gathering in one of those stadiums full of people and cheering on your team or, or booing your rival. Uh, I love when I go to a movie and, uh, and, you know, think about a comedy or an action movie, but, but mostly I think of comedies, that uh, when, the, when the theater's full of people and something funny happens and everybody laughs, I tend to laugh more. And if I'm, if I'm there all by myself, I'll, I'll probably stifle my laugh a little bit and, and really not enjoy it as much. One of the very first things that we see Jesus do in his public ministry is to call and gather a community around him. So first he called the 12 disciples, uh, and then that grew to 70, and it grew to an even greater number. And the earliest description of the church in the book of Acts also doesn't describe the actions of individuals, but it describes a whole community. 
Listen to a little of this. This is from Acts 2, uh, verses 43 and 47. It says, All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and they ate their food with glad and with generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. I love the scripture from Luke 17 where Jesus is asked about the kingdom of God uh, because I think his answer reveals uh, quite, a, quite a bit to us. But this is, this is the scripture. It says, once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or look, there it is, for in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Uh, And I think that word among is important. Uh, A lot of times it's translated in you, uh, but that word among also gives it a certain power. Does God's kingdom, does God's spirit reside within me or does it reside in us? Is it among us? I think that John Wesley, the father of the the Methodist movement, knew and understood this great truth uh, that the spirit moves in powerful ways when we are come together as a community or or as a group. He organized early Methodists into what he called classes and bands. And so he would take individual people who felt called to give their lives to Christ, and he would immediately organize them in these groups. And they would meet together at least once a week, and they would pray for one another. Uh, They would read scripture together. They would encourage one another. They would kind of, you know, give each other a little nudge if they saw one another straying. Uh, And that's where the most powerful moments of transformation took place in these people's lives, in these in these small communities. And I got to tell you, the most amazing things that I've seen in all of my years of ministry have happened when people have come together uh, and they have sought to accomplish something in the name of Jesus. I've been amazed at how our church has responded through this crisis of COVID-19. Literally the week after we had to shut down the church, or or the week we shut down the church, we were online uh, uh, putting putting worship out for people to be able to join in worship from home or from their computers or or wherever they were. Uh, Our Sunday school classes, even, even some of our older Sunday school classes, immediately got on Zoom and started having their meetings uh, on, 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 uh, on their computers and other devices. I don't know how many of you remember, we had a group called the Spirited Stitchers, uh, and they would communicate with each other through technology, and they had runners going between houses, and they ended up uh, making over 24,000 masks that were distributed around Baton Rouge and also around our state and even our, our, our nation. Uh, But again, the most amazing thing to me was how quickly our staff and our volunteers uh, began to put worship out on, on the internet. And uh, I, have, I have the privilege of uh, getting notes and cards and emails from people who, who say how a- appreciative they are about the work that our church has done in that. And I, I wanted to share just a, a couple with you. So here's one. It says this, Dear Reverend Witten, we are writing to thank you and the wonderful staff at First Methodist Baton Rouge for your uplifting service. Uh, we live in New Orleans and are lifelong Methodists. On every occasion, we have felt the warmth and loving spirit of your church, and oh, how we love the beautiful music. And that was from uh, Margaret and Fred, and they live in New Orleans and have been joining us online. Uh, Here's another one. Uh, This is from Carol. It says, Dear Reverend Witten, as a kidney transplant recipient, there are times that it's best if I don't worship in person at my home church. I stay home during flu season, and of course, this year has been especially challenging due to COVID-19. I just want to express my appreciation for your ministry that has been such a blessing to me. And again, that was from Carol. And then this one really amazed me. You know, we have people uh, tune in from all over the place. Uh, This one uh, is from somebody in Escalon, California. And uh, she writes this, Dear Reverend Brady, this year has been a challenge I've spent 50 years at the Escalon United Methodist Church in Escalon, California, playing the organ and directing the choir. 
I'm not a professional like your Dr. Webb or your Andrew Owens, but I serve our church the best I can. This year, I've been able to attend many services each Sunday morning. I must say, your services are my favorite. Uh, And again, that was from Mary from Escalon, California. So it's amazing the things that we can accomplish when we come together as, as a group. We pool our talents, we pool our spiritual gifts, and we work together for something in the name of Christ. Uh, one of the other most amazing things that, uh, that really kind of shocked me recently was as we began to wind up our capital campaign for this sanctuary renovation. So three years ago, we, we did a campaign to raise money for this beautiful renovation, and, uh, and uh, the, the renovation started out, uh, we, we estimated around $3.6 million, and we had commitments at, at that level. Uh, but as, as the, have, you, have you ever done a renovation? <laughs> or construction, so things started to grow a little bit. At some point in time, our church council decided that we would put a sprinkler system in this almost 100-year-old building, and so we added that to the cost of the project. And then we added the accessibility entrance that we knew we wanted to do. We weren't quite sure how much it would cost, and, and we added another thing there. And when all was said and done, the entire project cost just a little bit over $5 million. And I got to tell you, that number stunned me when I, when I first heard it. Uh, But what stunned me even more was when I found out how much we have left remaining on this project. And right now, and this was was May 20th, we owe $369,000 on a $5 million renovation. And I got to tell you, that stunned me. Now look, I know we're talking about, these are big numbers here, right? Um, But the blessing that this sanctuary is going to be, not only to to this current generation, not only to us, but to generations to come, to me, is worth every cent. Uh, Think about the people who are going to worship here, the people who will be baptized here, the people who will be uh, buried here, uh, married here, all all of those things. And so uh, we're going to do a dedication of this sanctuary on August the 29th. Uh, First of all, I hope that you'll plan to come. It should be a a grand and glorious time of worship. But the other other challenge I want to put before you is how fabulous would it be if when we reach the end of August, we could have this project completely paid off? And so, uh, again, we have about $369,000 left to do. And I know that that's a lot of money. But again, it's amazing what we can do when we come together, we share our resources and gifts uh, as, as the body of Christ. So if you've given a contribution to the sanctuary already, I want to say thank you. And I just want to ask you to pray about uh, whether or not you might be able to make another one. And if you haven't been able to contribute to this effort at all, now is a chance for you to be a part of of, uh, this really historic renovation. And so uh, if you want to write a check or you want to go to the church's website and make a gift to this, uh, just just put uh, renovation or sanctuary or whatever you want to on your check or your memo, and it'll, it'll go towards that. It really is amazing what happens when people come together in the name of Christ. So I asked you earlier, how many of you would like to experience the presence and power of God in a more tangible way? Or how many of you want or need God's power to be at work in your life? If you answered yes to those questions, I want you to remember the day of Pentecost. I really want you to think about that day. And I want you to think about the fact that on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit did not just come upon individuals. The Holy Spirit came upon the whole, that came upon this kind of collective, this community, this group. And when you think about that, I want you to do this. Stop trying to do it alone. Get involved in Christian community. Join a class. Join a group. Uh, pretty much every worship service, I extend an invitation for people to become a part of the church uh, through something we call Believe and Belong. Uh, you can contact Karen Milioto about that. And we actually have one today, May 23rd. There's going to be another one tomorrow night. And if you're watching this on Sunday morning, it's not too late to, to participate in those. And then there'll be more uh, next month as, as well. Uh, involve others in your challenge. Let other people know about your struggle. Or or is it some cause? Is there something God's calling you to do? Again, stop trying to do it alone. Open up. Open up to others. Be vulnerable. And stick it out with others. I want you to hear this reading again, a portion of this reading from Acts. And listen again to how the Spirit was moving among them. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So uh, you might be worshiping alone right now, uh, but if there are people with you, uh, I want you to take a moment and I want you to look around at those people. Uh, And if you're by yourself, you know, imagine the other people who are worshiping with you right now. Have you got them? Have you got them in your mind's eye? What if God is waiting to meet you in and through them? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now I want to invite you to join in uh, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now will you join me in our dismissal. Go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Proclaim the gospel throughout the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, with deeds of justice and mercy. We are sent in the name and power of the Lord. May the God who raised Jesus from the dead bless you. Amen. May the God to whom our Lord ascended make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May the Spirit, who is the unity of love between Father and Son, grant you peace forevermore. Amen. And thanks be to God.